Okay, so what I'm using for the mount for my pedals under the car is a bumper from a 90, 1987 to 1995 Jeep Wrangler YJ. So, what I need to do is clean off this metal so I can get, get everything measured out and cut. Um, I'm using my Eastwood Contour SCT to strip the metal off of this Jeep bumper. So what I'm using is the wire wheel, the, the brass wire wheel attachment drum. And I just did a small little test area. And this, again, I've said it before, I'll say it again, this machine's incredible. Right down to the metal. I'm gonna grab my my breathing apparatus. Just put this on. I don't know what type of paint this is. I should be wearing it anyways, you know. This style's nice because it fits underneath the mask. Can't really see very good, but I'm safe. Seven and a half total from this edge, which is there. I need from this line two and three quarters. That's the edge of my pedal assembly. Wow, that's strong. I'm putting that outside pretty far I go in the house. All right, so my pedal assembly got to go here all right so that's my front mount oh no wait a minute I did it wrong again did I man what the hell am I doing What the hell am I doing? All right, one, two, three, four. So I'm just gonna get this final measurement me measured, and then probably head in the house. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna get into cutting this tonight. I'm tired. Of that. Alright, for that measurement, I need eight. Alright, so from this side, I need eight and three quarters. Alright, so that side, eight and three quarters, but from here to here, I need eight and a half because the way the frame sweeps follows the, the contour of the body and it's got a little bit of a contour so so eight and a half and eight and three quarters here Oh, 
All right. So this is the rear piece, this is the side piece, and this is the front piece. And that's and this is the spot where my brake pedal assembly, uh, pedal assembly is going to go. I'm just going to leave this. I'm going to walk away. I'm tired. I'm going to go in the house. I hope you guys are doing well. Thank you again for all your support and watching the videos. And uh, just, you know, I never ask people to like and subscribe and all that stuff. Everybody already likes the videos, or a lot of people do. And um, yeah, so thank you. I appreciate it. See you guys tomorrow. We'll be out here finishing up, hopefully, on the, the pedal assembly. So take care. Bye. How's it going, everybody? Hope everyone's doing good today. It's Tuesday. I took Monday night off. The back's really been bothering me the past couple of days. And uh, it's just been really cold. The weather's been bad. And it just gets to me. So I took last night off, kind of took it easy. <clears throat> I'm working on the structure for my pedal assembly and my master cylinder. Uh, I'm kind of stuck in the middle with my pedal assembly and uh, kind of what I'm going to do. I have a few options. I can move my pedals further forwards about another inch and a half and that will allow me to run my pedals directly bolted to my master cylinder which will allow me to have them completely together in front of the transmission cross member or I need to uh, or I can keep my pedals where they're at and actually mount my master cylinder rear uh, backwards about a foot with a rod um, still not quite sure which route I'm gonna go uh, because I kinda have short legs and I don't want to screw myself by putting the pedals so far out that I can't depress the clutch all the way that just wouldn't make sense so I'm trying to just kind of weigh my options there but that being said moving forwards if I'm gonna keep the pedal assembly where it's at right now then I'm gonna cut this Jeep bumper up and use this for the mounting point or the box that I'm gonna build on the on the uh, coming off the frame rail Got the paint all stripped off of it it's all marked off where it needs to be where I got to cut and weld things and uh, I think I'm just going to get everything cut down where it needs to be cut and then go from there. So I'm going to clamp this to the table and start cutting. Get that clamped in place so I can get these things cut. It's been cold out so I got my little heater going. And uh, I'm trying to keep myself warm here. <laughs> So that's essentially going to be how my, the box for my pedal assembly is going to be. Frame rail kind of comes out, it's kind of a wedge, so I had to make this piece longer than the front piece, the back piece. But this lower center, the center hole here in the back, that's where the brake rod comes through. So I need to make sure that's marked out on this mount, so I can then take a drill a hole. Take a hole saw and drill that out as well. Inch and three quarters. I'd say this is the best, the best drill bit purchase I've ever made. This Milwaukee drill bit, these hole saws, they've just been incredible. Incredible. All right, I'm gonna make some room over at my drill press and then get these four small holes and this large hole drill. Alright, I'm back. So what I'm doing at this point now is 
I got my holes drilled. They line up with the mount for the F1 pedals. The only thing that I haven't drilled yet is down here. So what I need to do is I want to figure out exactly where my pedals are going to rest or reside on this mount here. So I have a few marks. I'll just go off of these marks. I have these marks here coming up the front. What I want to do is I actually want to cut. I'm going to cut down here and then I'm going to heat and bend this out. So this is flat. So that I can then mount this lower bolt hole on there. And then what that will also allow me to do is opening up this flange. Opening up the bottom portion of this mount is going to allow me to put my master cylinder in here. Because right now I can't make it fit because this bottom lip is here. That's going to allow me to run that in there. I don't think I'm going to be able to clear the cap in the little clip that holds the cap so I may have to just relieve this just a little bit but I'm not going to know if I need to or not until I get this heat and bent. So we're going to do that real quick. Alright so now I guess I'll bend this whole thing out and then bend this small little set area back. To be able to get the cap off so I need to be able to flip this clip down and then get the cap off of this so let me just grab a marker and mark my center line where the clip is assuming that's the center doesn't exactly matter and then I want to go just on the outside just on the outside of this cap and about a half inch back so I'm basically just gonna take a big half moon out of that like that as you can see this here basically gonna remove that area I can have access to the cap for the cover on the master cylinder and that will Hopefully clear that. I may have to open it up just a little bit more. But that's more or less what I'm going for. Need to be able to see what I'm talking about. See what I'm doing. So I got this bracket shaped up where it needs to be. I haven't cleaned it up yet. It's not perfect. It's not pretty. But I'm just trying to get all the holes where I need the holes and my measurements and get things kind of shaped up. So I know where everything's going to be positioned. Because what I need to do is I actually need to raise the pedals up to not flush with the floor, but about an inch down below the floor. If I were to keep these pedals, the height they're at now, the center of these pads would be 11 inches off the floor. I need them to be 8. Seven and a half to eight so I'm probably gonna end up having to take either three almost four inches out of the out of this shaft so I'm gonna start with three and then kind of see where I'm at after that I don't want them so high that I'm pushing down with the clutch and the brake with my toes I want to be able to keep my heel on the floor and be able to use the ball of my foot to be able to push down the pedal Alright, 
so it looks like after I get this one pieced together I may end up having to kind of trim this one up just a little bit not much whoop gas is on oh boy running low I had to adjust my regulator. It was, I had it, I bust a bump my regulator. That's better. That's got to go there, and then I think I'll have to probably adjust these cuts so it's sitting flush on the frame. So you can kind of see what I may end up running into an issue with is this flange is kind of cutting down into where the master cylinder is going to go. Also, I'm going to need access to my brake lines. So I'm going to end up having to drill some holes to run my brake lines through, which is fine. That actually doesn't interfere, so that's perfect. What I'm going to end up having to do is remove this top piece. So I'm going to re relieve the metal there, cut that back, cut three quarters of an inch. I'll do that after I get uh, this tacked on. Want, I need it to sit on the frame nice and straight and I don't want to have to be tweaking it. So my master cylinder is going to be here. I have to drill two holes for my brake lines. Honestly I don't even need this whole box. I probably could have got away with just this one bracket. But this will just add a lot more support. So, hello. Oh no. Never hurts to overbuild things. The pedals are gonna go here. That's the cylinder. It's gonna go right here. Oh. I'm still drinking it. Cut this. Okay, so what you do is you take this adapter plate these bolts are recessed and machined into this plate you set this plate on the adapter put those bolts in you then put these nuts on here you know like a normal human being could do it blindfolded I can't just can't seem to manage to get the nuts on the bolts so anyways in the perfect world those would have gone on then what you do is you take your F1 pedals and they mount 
No, wait a minute. One, two, three. Those go in the bo those go in like that. So you get your three in the back. Those bolts go there. These nuts hold the adapter plate on. They're fine threads, so that's why I was having a tough time with them. I'm not going to tighten them all the way because I'm still going to be taking stuff in and out. And then these three bolts go through the three lower holes on the pedal assembly. So why don't I set them up in the vise and then I'll give you a demonstration. This is a really cool adapter. I don't think there's another company on the market that's making this adapter. Matt Firestone is the owner of Old Yankee Speed Shop. He's actually the guy or well, one of the people that I bought the drivetrain for my 29 sedan from going back about four years now. I mean his partner Josh had a business called New England Speed and they're a speed shop located in Summers, Connecticut. I since I think they've since sold the business and gone on to different ventures still associated to hot rods but not doing the business at the speed shop so now these pedals are going to mount onto that adapter and you put your nuts on here and then you're good to go so the mount the adapter has to bolt onto in order to adapt the pedals onto this plate, onto the adapter, this adapter has to be mounted onto the master cylinder. And then, like I said, those simply slide on. This is the rod for the push rod for the pedals, for the, for the brakes rather. I'll replace this with this plunger here. This was supplied with the master cylinder. The master cylinder, I believe, is a first generation Mustang. The adapter kit is designed to be used with a 1967 to a 1972 Ford Mustang master cylinder. Part number 36222. It's for a drum drum brake system. So that's what you need. So the master cylinder is from a 67 to 72 Mustang. And then the adapter kit that you can get from Old Yankee Speed Co. Also he is in partnership with Millworks Hot Rods. They're up in Tewksbury, Mass. If you jump on MillworksHotRod.com, that's where you can buy this adapter. I believe they may also sell the master cylinder. I know for a fact they sell the adapter up at Millworks Hot Rods. So if you're building an early Ford car, or an early Ford Hot Rod, or any Hot Rod for that matter, and you're going to use a drum drum system and you want to run a set of F1 pedals, you need to buy this adapter in order to run it with a dual master cylinder. It's nice to have the dual master cylinder because you're separating the brake systems. You have your front system and your back system. Uh, to separate quadrants or whatever you call it. So uh, just for safety reasons, it's nice because you, if you lose, if, if anybody doesn't know, if you were to lose your brakes with a single master cylinder, if you lose one brake line or a wheel cylinder or something like that, the whole system goes down if you have a leak. In this situation here, if you would have run, if you would have a leak, let's say, just say in your rears, you'll still have fronts because they're separated. So you want to have a dual master cylinder, whatever you're, whatever you're building for a hot rod. So, so get online, get onto uh, Matt Firestone's website, like I said, or Millworks Hot Rods, MillworksHotRods.com, and uh, support Matt. He's a local New England guy. He's a hot rodder. He also has a YouTube channel, it's Old Yankee Speed Co. on YouTube. So if you were to do a search for uh, Old Yankee Speed, it should come up. Give him a subscribe, he posts up videos every now and then. Uh, I think he's trying to get more subscribers and, and, and put up more content. He does a lot of how-tos and technical content, which is really good for people that are just getting into this hobby and uh, need some info that they may not know otherwise. So. 
So check out Matt at Old Yankee Speed on YouTube, and then also check out the guys over at Millwork Hot Rod. Support them. So I need to make just a few little adjustments where it meets the frame. I gotta cut a little bit off the, just shave a little bit off the bottom so it fits flush against the frame. I don't think I'm gonna have to notch this over the transmission cross member. It's gonna tuck up just above it. So I think it's gonna end up working out pretty good. So now this is gonna go right there like that. That's gonna sit down. This is this mount here, this clip is flush with the top of the bracket, so I know that's not gonna interfere in any, with anything. And the only other thing I need to do, which I should do before I mount this is drill the holes so I can get have access to my brake lines there. All right, so I just kind of made some quick measurements or marks so I need to relieve that oval so I have access for my brake lines. Quite the intricate part. And again, I probably didn't need to go this route. I probably didn't need to go crazy and build this big box and all that stuff. But I had planned on mounting the master cylinder back here and having a rod. So I would have needed a mount here and a mount here for the pedals. However, it worked out. I'm raising the, the whole mount up and I'm going to notch, I'm going to cut the pedals. I'm going to section the pedals. So that's why now I'm doing it the way I'm doing it. All right, so let me get these drilled and then I'll connect the lines and remove that piece of metal that I'm going to cut out. I'm going to have to get this all welded up before I put it in the car. Just makes sense to do it that way. I'll do that first as well. So I'm probably not going to get this mounted in tonight, but. I'll at least have everything built so tomorrow I'll get it tacked in place. I'll get the pedals mounted, the master cylinder mounted, make sure I have good access for everything. And as long as I know I'm good to go, then I'll get it welded in the frame. And then after that, I'll have to cut my pedals down, get them the exact height I want for my feet. I need to make an access panel in the floor pan, which that's that'll be easy. I'll do that. Mount the starter. <laughs> and then get everything in epoxy and get this freaking car off to the exhaust shop. That might even happen this weekend. I'd be pumped. I would be pumped. So now what I need to do is I just need to cut, connect these holes. Actually, do I? What are the odds? Those that actually line up. You know, if I had done my math and really taken my time, I could have got those to line up pretty good. But I hadn't really planned on that. So I'm just gonna, again, connect these holes. All right, so what I need to do, so here's my mount that is basically all set and ready to get welded in. I welded these corners, just cleaned it up with a flap disc real quick. Got the master cylinder and the pedal assembly mounted. I removed all the, the push arms, whatever you call them. Uh, I removed those just so I didn't have anything dangling and hanging around. So I kind of just move that out of the side, uh, off to the side real quick. I need to get this cleaned up and get this set back down in here. So the entire mount mounts right down in here and the bottom of this mount here, the bottom of this mount mounts flush with the bottom of the frame. And that allows me about three quarters of an inch from the top of this to the underside of this frame, the, the floor structure. So I have a little bit of a space, which is perfect. Master cylinder ends up being about right here. So I'll have to make a little access panel in my floor pan. Oh. Hi honey! Yeah! How you doing? 
you doing? I can't even come in here to get a drink. Well, you shouldn't be drinking. It's not good for your health. Michael, what? I live with you. I have to drink. <laughs> you have to drink? I Do I make you drink? No, I can barely finish two drinks. <laughs> 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 She says I drive her to drink. Don't believe a word she says. It's a little smoky in here. <laughs> Pedals up where they need to be. I had a pedal stop. And that was kind of helping me to be honest with you. This is the part where it would come in really handy to have an extra set of hands. I was only born with two. So it's more or less right there. Alright, what is that set on? Alright, I'm pretty good. You know, I don't think I'm going to have to take out as much as I thought. I thought I was going to have to take out about four inches, but... I actually don't think that's the case. I think I'm probably only going to have to take out about two inches or so. You can see kind of where things are located. That's where the business end is going to be as far as the pedals go. I'd like to grab my helmet and get a good tap on that. And I don't know why. Getting out of a good ground. I don't know. Check my gas. Oh yeah, gas is off. Right, I gotta switch bottles in my in my welder real quick. But. All right, I'll get my seat in place. Kind of see where I'm at. So you can see where I'm at. This master cylinder here. I just threw a couple of quick tacks on the the mount on the side of the frame. There's my pedals here. They're a little high, as I had said. I know they're high. They're gonna come down probably say two to three inches maybe. And then what I need to do is I need to get, like I said, this at seven and a half inches from the top of the floor height. So I'd say roughly probably add about a half an inch to, to this here. So if I were to add a half an inch, at that point from this half an inch, I need to be at a total of seven and a half to eight inches. So I'm going uh, to throw the seat in here real quick and then figure out where exactly these pedals have to go. Alright, so threw in the sheet metal, I got my seat in, and I'll tell you what, it is gonna be like driving a Cadillac. This thing is gonna be amazing. I can stretch my legs out. Uh, the pedals need to come down. Yeah, I think I'm probably gonna only section these pedals about an inch. I'm glad I didn't cut them first. Uh, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to climb underneath and make a measure, uh, make a quick mark where my master cylinder is, so I can get this cut out and I can get a new flange built or uh, access panel built for that. Amazon, twelve bucks for two of them. Work light, it's called. They're great. Ugh. All right, and they're magnetic. Pull the sheet metal off. Michael. Yeah. This is your one minute warning. But well, one minute for what? One minute warning. Who gives a one minute warning? For what? I don't know what the heck she's talking about. One minute warning. Michael, this is your one minute warning. So that, I guess, is more or less what I need. So 
I'll fine tune the measurements on this. I'll get this cut out and I'll get one float. But that's going to be my master cylinder access panel. So the pedals end up falling exactly where I needed to, them to. I have a small little sharpie mark here on the frame rail and I knew that's where my tow board was going to start and I needed those pedals to be in front of this piece of sheet metal and they are. That's essentially as far as they'll go. If I need to notch this out a little bit I can. I've got probably about half an inch wiggle room but I don't think I'm going to need to. Those pedals are just tacked in place for now but moving forwards once I know them for sure, 100%, I'll get that welded onto the uh, side of the frame. And those will be checked off the list. So, All right, everyone, you heard Ali. I had my one-minute warning about five minutes ago. Uh, dinner's ready, and I'm going to go in and eat some dinner. This is a big thing to get off my list. And I'm almost done with that. I'm going to get my little access panel cut out and fabricated tonight. I bought a flange and tool. I went and bought a flange and tool, so I'll be able to get that. I uh, should be able to whip that up pretty quick. I'm going to so. eat it all without you. Alright. You're ruining my video. I ruined everything. Did you ruin dinner? No, it actually smells good. Alright, I'll be right in. I'm just finishing it up. Alright, everyone. I'll see you soon. So, I guess my best reference point is probably this hole here. Which is this hole. So, I'll make my measurement. So as of right now, this should be about four inches in from this hole, which is just pretty much right on. So it'll be like a, about an inch out in each direction, roughly three quarters of an inch in each direction. Uh, this master cylinder is about two and a half inches wide. So that, my little panel here, the center section is three inches, and this is five total. To clean this up real quick and I hit that with a whiz wheel and uh, clean this up and kind of remark it. I'm glad I I'm glad I double checked it. It's St. Patty's Day. I just had some corned beef and cabbage that my amazing girlfriend just cooked up for dinner which was delicious. And my son and his girlfriend cooked up like a 2,000 year old Roman recipe for an appetizer slash dessert which is really amazing. So I am surrounded by some incredible people. So I'm very fortunate. So I just picked this flanging tool up the other day down at Harbor Freight. I've always wanted one of these and I've just never bought one. I've definitely had the need for one in the past. Again, I've just never bought one. I'm going to try it on a piece of metal first so I figure out exactly which way i got to do it because again, I've never used one. I'm hoping it bends this metal. Very little. Huh. Uh. No, it is doing it. Okay. All right, so. This needs to go, so if it's bending it, it's pushing that up. So I need it to push this down, so it needs to go 
this way. So that's what I ended up with. Sure, I have a couple little spots I could do a little better, but I think that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. So now what I need to do is I need to make a template for that panel that I need to recreate. I want to make some measurements so I can get my holes marked where I want to punch my holes because if you didn't know, the front side of this is a flanging tool, the back side is a hole punch. And I believe it's an eighth inch hole. Alright, let's try this hole punching tool now. I don't know if there's a certain way I need to do it. I don't think there is. Woohoo! That's a hole! Well, I'll tell you what. That's going to make my life easier. And I guess when it comes to these cars, it's always an important thing. Alright, so... I got that all punched out and done, done and done, done. Let me get a template made for that and then I'll uh, I'll get this built and get it in the car. I think we all know the dirty glove trick at this point, so I don't need to just I don't need to describe it. It, it stinks. Oh, that's Smell it? No, are you gonna put this in your video? So bad. Are you videoing? Yeah. That's disgusting. You, you smell it? It out. smells worse than cabbage. Oh. It's so Did you nasty. Tell everyone how wonderful of a dinner I made? What happened? Did you tell everyone how wonderful of a dinner I made? Yeah. You did not. Huh? You did not. Yes, I did. You did? What'd you say? I said I just had. It's St. Patrick's Day and I just had. Man, my butt smells so it's bad. It's so gross. You smell it's it? Coming out. Oh, it's so nasty. You're you don't want me to come in the house. house. I figured you're gonna tell me to sleep out here on the couch. You can sleep out here on the couch. It's that so, beer and corned beef and cabbage. That was just really good dinner. Coming though. at me, it's they're like samurais in my stomach. Good you're a talented chef. I try. A cheferette. Woo! I mean, at least I can cook up for my family. You guys all eat pretty well. We like it. We like you. I mean, I, I'll i keep you around. <laughs> until you screw up and then you're out of here. <laughs> I will be. You're out of here. You. Are you for real? Well, isn't that perfect? That's pretty close. I'm going to see if I can get away with that. It might be a little narrow. That's all right. Get some shears. Snippy, snippy, snip. Bing, bang, boom. I want to get it fitting a little better. The reason being is it really barely, it just barely covers the holes. And I really like to have it covering the holes a little better. I don't know.
All right, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to punch these holes real quick. I'm kind of thinking this piece I'm just going to end up using almost for like a trial run. I think I, think I want to make it a little wider because I feel like it's just not quite wide enough. Again, I think I'm just going to use this as a trial piece. Kind of learning. So like I said, what I should have done is punched them just in this and not on the floor pan. Because now I need, to, I need to through bolt it. Either that or put inserts in on the floor pan, which maybe I'll just do that. Alright, so what I'm going to do now is call it a night. Pretty happy with where I'm at. I know I probably didn't do things exactly the way I should have, but again, I'm I'm still learning at this. I've never used one of these tools. Certainly not a tool. Uh, the holes don't. No, they do line up. So there we go. So what I need to do is just roll a bead roll a quick bead right down here so I'm gonna go do that real quick all right so the only thing I really need to do is to get these these ends tapped back down so I'm gonna do that real quick so I gotta get that if I, if I can't get it figured out I'll just run a flat piece of metal and I probably could have just used this flanging tool just to straighten it out all right so I got this shaped up kind of the best I could it's still got a little bit of a twist to it but this was just more or less the kind of a trial piece. I think this is actually 20 gauge and not 18 gauge. I should have left it alone is what I think. Yeah, so that's it. That's the end of my night. So thanks everyone for watching. I appreciate it. Uh, that's where I'm going to wrap up for the night. It's getting a little bit late. I got my driver's side floor pan kind of set where it needs to be for now. Uh, now at this point what I need to do is get the motor and transmission back out of the car so I can get the complete clutch assembly installed and then I can make my uh, clutch linkage so stay tuned and check in uh, probably probably in a few days uh, trying to do videos Saturdays and Wednesdays I may throw in a couple extra videos during the week depending on how my week goes and what I get done in the garage. Also depends on my work week with my day job. So appreciate everyone watching. Thanks again for following along. I'll see you guys soon. Take care. Bye bye.